This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I know the pandemic's been rough and job and how you're going to pay your rent and all that. This is not the time to murmur, complain, to be angry. It's the time to have a flashback and look at what Jesus has done in your life. And I, I believe this is the time where you will begin to give God thanks in the midst of seemingly hopeless situations. And I believe that things will begin to happen because you do that. I, I believe that's why I'm teaching this right now, so that you can understand the supernatural power that is made available in thanksgiving. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are. I just don't want to neglect giving him glory and giving him thanksgiving because I tell you what, man, there, there's something that happens if you take the time to give him thanksgiving and give him glory for the act that was performed. And that's what this is about, showing appreciation, continual appreciation of the acts of God that, that happens in your life. Be appreciative. Be thankful. I mean, my mama raised me. When somebody do something good for you, say thank you. But if God is doing something good for you all the time, be thankful for what he has done for you. Look at this in Malachi chapter 2. I thought this was interesting. Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now, I know this was in the time of the law, and, uh, and, 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 and especially here, this was the time of the law and the prophets. Um, and so from, you know, from from Judges all the way through Malachi would be the, the prophets. Now watch this. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Now watch what it was even back then. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, lay what to heart? To give glory unto my name. Oh, he's saying if you don't hear and if you don't lay it to the heart to show appreciation, to give thanks and to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessing. Wow. Why? Because they didn't take it to heart. He says, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. You do not lay, lay what to heart? To show appreciation, to give glory to his name. Well, it was serious there. Remember, under the law, you know, when the violation of the law meant that you, you, had to, you had to suffer the consequences or you had to pay the price. There was always a result for violating the law. And one of the things that it just got, got my attention, like, man, that was so serious that they would even talk about this in the Old Testament, that Thanksgiving was a serious deal, that giving glory to God was a serious deal. Wow, man, what is it? that can come forth as a result of our thanksgiving. I believe it's the supernatural. You see, Jesus was never left stranded. He utilized the key to bring about a solution. And I believe the key that he used, this right here, here's Jesus demonstrating how he used thanksgiving that caused the supernatural to be made available. Look at John chapter 6, verse 11. Some of you are familiar with John 6 and 11 where you know, there was a two-piece fish dinner that showed up, but it wasn't enough to feed all the people that were there. So what do you do with so little when there's a potential 20-some thousand people that are there? And uh, look at what Jesus did. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, what? 
So we need something supernatural to happen because there's just a two-piece snack here. Uh, two piece, uh, 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 two loaves and, and five loaves and two pieces of fish. And we needed a miracle to feed all these people. So the first thing Jesus does, he takes the loaves and then look at this, he gives thanks. I'm telling you, I believe that thanksgiving is the power or the, or, or, or the power or, or the door to the, to, to the supernatural power of God. I believe the supernatural power of God comes through thanksgiving. He says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, look what happens. He distributed to the disciples, the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of all the fishes as much as they would. Wow. And the Bible says, and when they were eaten and were full. So look at the multiplication of this food. Well, how did it start? Jesus was never stranded. Father, I thank you. And as a result of that appreciation, I tell you what, the supernatural showed up and everybody got something to eat. And in fact, while we're in John, look at John chapter 11, verse 41. You see it again, John chapter 11, 41. You see how Jesus utilized this key of appreciation to bring about uh, uh, the solution to every situation here. He says, then they took away the stone. So this is Lazarus. Lazarus has died. You remember the, the famous uh, statement by the sister? You know, if you would have been here, my, my brother would not have died. And, and Jesus was like, girl, you don't even know who I am. You know, I am the resurrection and, and the life. I am. And look what he says in verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, watch this, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Wow. There's thanksgiving again. There's thanksgiving. Jesus is utilizing this key to, 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 to be the solution to situations that he encountered. Now, the one thing I think about, if Jesus was utilizing thanksgiving to bring forth supernatural, you and I can do the same thing. Jesus gave thanks in seemingly hopeless situations. I, I, I need for you to hear that. He gave thanks in seemingly hopeless situations. You see, you know, I know the pandemic's been rough and job and how you gonna pay your rent and all that. This is not the time to murmur, complain, to be angry. It's the time to have a flashback and look at what Jesus has done in your life. And I, I believe this is the time where you will begin to give God thanks in the midst of seemingly hopeless situations and I believe that things will begin to happen because you do that. I, I believe that's why I'm teaching this right now, so that you can understand the supernatural power that is made available in thanksgiving. Praise God. Now, uh, I believe that thanksgiving will gain heaven's attention. How many of you want heaven to give attention to some situations that you're going through. I believe Thanksgiving will, will gain the attention of heaven. I think about David. David, dude, David was like a dude that, that very rarely, if any, lost a battle. And so when you look at somebody that accomplished, you probably want to dig into the situation to find out, well, what was he doing? You know, consider King David then. Terrible opposition and challenges during his reign but he never lost a battle. Well, what, what do you suppose the reason was? The supernatural was always at work in his favor. Always. The supernatural was always at work. You know, David wasn't just like such an amazing fighter. The supernatural was at work. I mean, even when you read the story when he was uh, a teenager, and uh, the supernatural got on that stone and killed Goliath, the giant. It was, all, it was working on his behalf. Ten times a day, David was in the sanctuary, but only three of those times were for prayer. The remaining seven times were for appreciating the faithfulness of God. Seven times appreciating the faithfulness of God. And notice it was intentional. 
that David seven times a day out of ten going in to show appreciation unto God. You remember at the beginning of this teaching, I said I believe that a key word here is intentionally uh, showing thanksgiving to God, intentionally giving God thanksgiving. Consider the apostle, uh, or, or, or all of the apostles. Look at the apostles. Signs and wonders following the preaching in the name of Jesus. They were warned to preach no more in that name. Remember that? But rather than complain and murmur, they had a prayer meeting. And man, the supernatural came out of that prayer meeting. Look at, let me show you a couple of Acts chapter 4, 24 and 31. They're like, you better not preach anymore in that name. And they had a prayer meeting. They, and, and in this prayer meeting, you can imagine the, the glory they were giving to God, praising God and thanking God and giving him glory for his mighty acts. And in Acts 24 and then verse 31, he says, And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and they said, Lord, thou art God. Look at them. They're getting ready to go before God in thanksgiving and glory. Thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in, in them is. He, listen, they're giving him glory right now. They're giving him glory for his mighty acts and his mighty works that he's done. And then look at where, in verse 31. The supernatural shows up. Verse 31, Acts 4, 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Look at there. Thanksgiving goes forth and, and the supernatural shows up. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with confidence and boldness. The supernatural shows up. I, I tell you, it is the plan of the enemy to get you more involved in complaining and murmuring and less involved in giving him thanks and giving glory to his name. And then if you look in Acts chapter 16, 25, and 26, they begin to give God glory and begin to praise God. God and, and uh, this praise turned around captivity. I don't know what areas of your life you're, you, you, you find yourself captive in, but there's a way to turn captivity. It's when you take the time to give God thanks, you give him glory, you praise his name and giving him glory and thanks, God will turn your captivity. Some of you may be captive by debt. You might be captive by some addictive behavior. You might be captive by some emotional situation. You might be captive by fear. But I'm telling you right now that God will turn those things around. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, he says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed, and they sang praises unto God, man. And he says, And the prisoners heard them. So it was loud enough to be heard. It was loud enough to be heard. And look at the next verse here. He says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. There's the supernatural showing up. Honey, I believe when the supernatural shows up, things will start shaking around you. Praise God. He says, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. I I'm telling you, if, 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 if we, as Christian people, we cannot allow the things that are going on in the world to distract us from the will of God for our life, which is giving him thanksgiving, which is praising him and glorifying his name, glorifying him for his mighty acts, intentionally giving him thanksgiving, intentionally and on purpose and setting things aside, setting something, time aside where you can give God thanksgiving for all of the things that he has done. Now, if you don't appreciate God, you will depreciate with time. Let me say that again. If you don't appreciate God, you will depreciate with time. I tell you, the worst thing you can do is live a life of a murmurer and a complainer. I tell you what, you find yourself depreciating. In fact, look at Isaiah 65, 24. I want to show you something. Uh, there's a company of people that won't need to ask God for anything because they will spend time giving God appreciation. There's a group of people who, while they are speaking, God will be performing it. Praise God. There are a group of people that won't need to ask because God is already answering. 
And I want to prophesy that to your life, man, that some of you, when you start praying, God has already answered it, praise God. Look at this scripture right here, verse 24. He says, and, I, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Man, check that out. Before they call, I will answer. See, you cannot abide in the will of God for your life, and that's thanksgiving, and, and not experience this. I mean, the supernatural is there. The supernatural, when you appreciate God, when you spend time appreciating God, praise God. You're going to be valuable in heaven because of that appreciation. You won't depreciate in your value. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. That sounds to me like a heavenly father that's excited to move on your behalf because of the glory that you, can, that you give unto his name. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. That's what happened, man, when they began to praise God in the, in the middle of a battle and they gave glory to his name and the supernatural showed up and caused the army to turn against each other. I believe that's going to happen in your life, praise God. God gets committed to meeting your needs, even those who haven't, uh, who haven't mentioned those things in prayer. God is committed to meeting those needs, even those needs that you have failed to mention in prayer. Now, I, I, let, me, let me share real quick three benefits, that, and, and hopefully you, you see some great benefits, but three benefits that come from thanksgiving. Three benefits that come from thanksgiving. Number one, thanksgiving brings down the presence of God. Thanksgiving or brings the presence of God. Look at Psalms 22 and verse 3. It brings the presence of God. In his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are favors forevermore. Watch this, man. He said in verse 3, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. See, a praiseful life will enjoy God's presence at all times. So you got to build your future for yourself through thanksgiving and praise. You know, God hates, like I said, grumbling and murmuring. I mean, this, this is absolute. When you live a life and you decide you live a life of murmuring and complaining, then you're going to also find out that you're, you know, this is just a program for destruction. A life of complaining is just a program for destruction. I'm talking to the complainers. I'm talking to people who, 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 I mean, they don't think there's anything wrong with complaining. They don't think there's anything wrong with murmuring. And I'm telling you, that's, that's the enemy's program for your destruction. And I'm telling you, 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 may, you may say, well, you know, it, you know, I have a reason to complain right now. I mean, we're in the middle of a, of a pandemic, but you're not going to get out of the situations complaining. Well, I lost my job. Well, you're not going to get a new one complaining. So murmuring and complaining is just the program, a program for your destruction. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and, and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. Thanksgiving will bring you into the presence of the Lord. Murmuring and complaining will bring you into the presence of destruction. Look what he says in verse 10. He said, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Look at what happened when they murmured. They, they entered into the program for destruction. God, the will of God for our life is not murmuring and complaining. So, so start catching yourself and, and stopping yourself and, and you get a partner, your husband or wife, and when you, you find each other complaining, say, don't do that. Don't do that. We're not going to enter into this place of destruction. We're not going to do that. We are going to give thanks to God. No matter how we feel, not moved by what it looks like, not moved by what it fe look, uh, uh, feel like, no matter what they say. We are not going to complain. We're not going to murmur. We're going to move into thanksgiving so we can see supernatural show up in our lives. Number two, the second benefit of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving brings about increases and multiplication. Somebody says, say what? Yep. Thanksgiving brings about increases and multiplications. Look at Psalm 67 and verses 5 and 6. 
Notice what he says here. He says, let the people praise ye, or praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. He says, then when, when people praise and give glory to God, give thanks to God, then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. I tell you what, that is, a, that is a key to understanding how to get the earth to yield her increase, how to begin to see increase in your life, increase of love, increase of promotion, increase of favor, increase of mercy and grace. If you want to see increase, if you want to see increase on the earth, the Bible says when you begin to to, to give glory to God through thanksgiving or give glory to God through praise and begin to operate like this, he says that is going to release a supernatural release of multiplication and increases. Thanksgiving is like rain from heaven. It causes the earth to bud and to bring forth fruit in multiple folds. So when you give thanks, you experience increase and blessings. And look what he says in John 6 and 11. You know, we, we talked about the loaves there, but look what happened in John 6 and 11. You, we see multiplication as a result of thanksgiving. Uh, you know, Jesus gave thanks, the Bible says, and he says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would eat. So notice, multiplication came as a result of thanksgiving. I don't know about you, man, but I'm going to start thanking God. I'm going to, go, I'm going to start thanking God. I, I, and li listen, I, you know, I'm grateful and thankful for all of the wonderful things that happens as a result of thanking God, and I'm grateful and thankful for the supernatural being made available as a result of me thanking God. But you know the motivation behind me thanking God? The motivation behind me thanking God is that I have a relationship with Him, and I am really appreciative from my heart because of what He has done. I, I really want to show appreciation to him for what he's done. I, I'm not motivated to, to give him thanks so that, you know, I can get something to happen to me more than I am motivated because of who he is in my life. I'm motivated because of who he represents in my life. He is my friend. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is someone that I intimately know and that I am, I am actually grateful and thankful for what he has done. Now, here's the third benefit of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving destroys the prayer request mentality. Think with me for a moment. It destroys the prayer request mentality. You ever been around a lot of church folks and, hey, bro, what's going on? Pray for me. You know, pray for me. And, and I don't know if they really believe you're going to pray for them or not, but there is a, a prayer request mentality that we need to look at. Uh, it's disgusting to see how many believers have uh, tuned themselves into prayer projects. They've turned themselves, excuse me, into prayer projects. Wow. A after Jesus has done everything he's done and has finished the work, you're still a prayer project. <laughs> you know, the Bible makes it clear, blessed is he who is not offended in me. In fact, look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, all right, what's the will of God? Thanksgiving. He said, we saw that in 1 Thessalonians. What's the will of God? That, that we are thankful and appreciative to God for what he's done. For after you have, have done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. You, you, keep, you keep thinking that, you know, well, if I turn myself into, pro, into a prayer project and I can get a thousand people to just start praying for me all the time, that something will happen versus, you know, being thankful to God, being grateful to God, giving God the glory, and then being patient. In other words, rather than becoming a prayer project, you're just going to be patient about the thanksgiving. You're going to be patient about the glory of God. You're going to you're going you're gonna to lose yourself in a sense in giving God glory. And the Bible promises that when you do this, you will receive the promise.